What's up, everybody? It's T. Holla, True, a.k.a. The Barbershop. And we're here at the Seattle Interactive Conference with two special guests that are here joining us. These are the guys from Exploding Kitten uh, and Oatmeal, of course. And we want to introduce Elon Lee and Matt Inman. Thank you guys for joining us here today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, first of all, before we get started, we want to introduce our barbershop people, which is usually a little bit different demographic than I've seen in here so far at Seattle Interactive. We want to introduce them to Exploding Kitten and who you guys are. Can you explain to them what Exploding Kitten is? Sure. Uh, well, Exploding Kittens is a card game. It's a party game. You, uh, it's literally a physical card game. You play with your friends, your family, uh, over a table and beers. And, uh, it's really funny. Uh, I designed the game uh, with uh, our friend Shane Small. Matt illustrated all the cards. Matt does the oatmeal. And uh, it's famous for being the most backed uh, game in Kickstarter history. And uh, now we've launched it all over the world. And so it's selling really well all over the place. OK. What are the, what are the, the concept? Because Exploding Kitten, it kind of sounds really sadistic, kind of. Yeah, so, so gory. Right? Yeah, no, no, we've had a lot of people when they saw the name, like, you know, these older ladies, which like, well, that's just, that's just me. That's kind of the response you get. So when we made this game, we actually had a discussion about that, because the idea behind the game is, uh, you draw cards, if you draw a kitten, it explodes, it kills you, you're dead, you're out of here. So all the other cards in the game are used to diffuse or mitigate the kitten. So you can feed him a sandwich, you give him belly rubs to like make him happy, that's how you stay in the game. But we still have this problem where you're gonna blow up cats, right? You're blowing up kittens, right. that's not very nice. So when I did the art, we were very particular about making sure that the cats were kind of accidentally killing themselves. Like, by they would be playing with a grenade. Yeah, how does a cat accidentally yeah, kill himself? Yeah, yeah, not suicidal cats. No, 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 right? they're yeah. just screwing yeah. up, yeah. like doing yeah. normal yeah. cat things. Like, gnawing on something it shouldn't chew on and then detonating a, a block of C4. So we okay. tried to make it so these kitties are blowing up on their own, it's their own fault doing kitty things. Okay. Yeah. And so, it's important to say, I think, like, the goal is don't blow up the kitten. Like, right. that's the yeah. bad thing. Yeah. Okay. We don't want that. Yeah, we didn't make kitten slaughter in the card game. That would have been different. <laughs> so that's that's our next, that's our next I mean, that might be your next venture. Yeah, you might have to. You should write that down. <laughs> So do you get like, so I'm assuming there's multiple lives, multiple kitten lives you get or? Yeah, so the way it basically works is, um, it, it, the game works like Russian Real Life, right? You got a deck of cards, there's the kittens hidden in the deck somewhere. Everybody takes turns drawing cards. You hope you don't draw the exploding kitten. So all the cards that aren't an exploding kitten help you not draw the exploding kitten. So maybe one will let you skip your turn or shuffle a deck before you draw or somebody else to go instead of like those, those sorts of things. And then uh, hopefully, like, don't actually draw that horrible kitten uh, and do it yourself. Gotcha. When you do, everybody laughs at you and they care about you. Sounds like a hell of a drinking game. Quick question, because it's a game, it's a drinking game, of course, alcohol is going to be involved. Is there any way to cheat this game? I know you don't want to give it out to the people who will be watching this, but is there any cheating codes or anything? I'm a cheater, so I like to cheat. I like to win at all costs. The only real way you can cheat is if you draw an exploding kitten, you don't tell anyone, you just kind of hang on to it. But it would just be because at the end of the game they're going to figure it out because the num wrong number of kittens are going to be there so you would just look like you cheated at a drinking party game. You're blaming it on the beer. Blaming it on the alcohol. Yes, yes, I, I didn't notice the giant flaming card with kitten written on right. it. I had too many but drinks. Yeah, no, no cheat codes, right? Physical cards, right? Yeah, right. No, it's not digital. So uh, we, like my, my background, Matt, Matt does an online comic, very digital world. Uh, I, my background is I was the lead game designer for the original Xbox, very, very digital world. This is, this is like the, our, our first sort of foray, at least collaborative thing to games, yeah. physical games. Which is a unique story in and of itself. So, like you said, you come from a very digital-based background, Microsoft, and you were very creative. How did you two come together to do this exploding kit? Uh, I'll give you a real short version. Uh, we, me and a bunch of friends, uh, went on vacation together and like rented a house in Hawaii. And he brought this card deck called. Uh, it was a poker deck, but it was he called this game Bomb Squad. It was just made a new game. Literally and, scribbled on the card. Yeah, like Sharpie on the poker yeah, deck, yeah. calling it Bomb Squad. So we were playing, and you were trying to not draw bomb cards. And if you did, you could defuse them. You know, like, yeah, so I was playing it with them. I was like, this game is amazingly fun. And I've always wanted to make some sort of card game. Yeah. So I was like, let's rebrand it. Let's call it Exploding Kittens. And yeah, tell us, what, yeah, oh, yeah, get to that right, part. Right. So when you play the card game, the bomb game, you're stressing about the bomb. Like, who has the bomb? Are you going to explode? I'm going to explode. You're very worried because it's a very intense game. The longer you play, the greater your odds of exploding, the more intense the game gets. Yeah. So uh, 
I thought rather than stressing about a mom, like stress about a kid. Because you're, you're, that's the conversation you're having is who has a kid. Right? You're way funnier than who has a kid. Because of the Yeah, you're like, oh, no, I want a kid. Like they're going to blow up. So that's kind of how that came, came about. It was really fast. We went from, from concept to launch to success six weeks, eight weeks. So creatively, it was so rewarding for me because none of the, you know, let's have meetings for two years before we do the thing. We just do the thing and then, and then figure it out later. You that's know? a big difference between a physical game and a digital game. In a digital game, we work on a video game two years before you have that thing. But here, literally, we, we got this thing out the door. It's, it's a solved problem. You know how to print on cardboard, you know how to ship them out, it's just a yeah. I'd like to talk about the Kickstarter. You talked about you guys um, made history with your Kickstarter. So speaking to normal people like myself who don't know much about Kickstarters and getting stuff going like that, if I had an idea and I wanted to go out there and do that, I know people try to do it all the time. What is the formula or what are they missing to not get them to the next level? Uh, I mean, for me, one of the most important things from this was I want to get this. You know how we just explained a game to you? How simple that yeah. sounded? And how you actually probably want to play it? Like, I want to grab a beer and play that game with you. That, try to get that down in less than a minute. Like, rather than the 10 minute Kickstarter video with all this music playing and all these extra shots that you don't need, be clear, be concise, and, and just sit in that nexus of, of entertaining and not annoying and easy to grasp. And with our video. Not and, annoying. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Write, that, write that down. Yeah. Don't be annoying yeah. when you're asking we try for money. To really hit that mark. The other thing is, you know, a lot of things are relevant right now. Cats are funny, the internet loves cats. Uh, it's a tabletop game. Tabletop gaming is kind of on the surge right now because a lot of people burn out from. You know, sitting through Xboxes all day, which is totally anti-social. Which card gaming is very, very social. There's another, um, the other, the other half of that I think is we're trying to raise ten thousand dollars, which was honestly the minimum amount we needed to print the game. Yeah. You know, really get it out. We ended up raising almost nine million. Uh, and, and the way that works, the reason that works is um, because once we hit our goal, we just stopped talking about that money. Like it wasn't Kickstarter anymore. It wasn't crowdfunding. Anymore. It was just like let's build a party for the crowd. Just the crowd part. And uh, what that all let people do was uh, once they understood the game, once they thought the game was funny, they could suddenly take it to all their friends and say, check out this awesome Kickstarter page. People are doing amazing things. They're not only backing the project, but they're taking pictures of themselves wearing cat ears and they're uh, trying to recreate a taco cat, which is one of the cards in our game. Right? You know, that's one of the things I, I peeped about your story. I wanted you to kind of expand on that. See, there's a lot of people that do these Kickstarters. It, they they run into the wall and yeah. you know they never able to transcend that certain spot. And I noticed you guys did some things that kind of really built a community around your project. We Can you tell them about that? Right? We hit that exact wall you're describing, and we could have stopped there, but we found a way to climb over it. Yeah, our, our campaign was huge, and then you know Peter Doug, you know, we got to point everybody else. So do some creative things. Yeah, and the, and the creative things were just. Normally, when, when Kickstarter, um, the way Kickstarter operates is your option to be a Kickstarter company. You can back the project or not. Those are your two options. Push the button or don't push the button. It's a really boring game. Right. Like, that's, right. that's really lame. So we built a whole bunch more buttons that people could push. Instead of backing us or not backing us, you could participate in a community. You could take a funny picture of yourself. You could participate in the chat. You could uh, help us out with the Wikipedia page. You could go to a live event and get to play the game with other people. We just built all these buttons that people could push. So suddenly, it was a really exciting game. Instead of the boring game, you could write one button. Now there's a ton of different options. And because of that, uh, people just kept coming to the page every single day. They kept talking about it. They kept telling their friends about it. And the news would pick it up. And this, this engine just started cranking crazy because this was suddenly a fun game to play. It's a boring one that people are used to. Yeah. Right. I got you. I got you. Well, part of the Kickstarter, all that sounds great, but I really like the part where you just engage, just into that community. It's not like you're advertising. I know you are you're advertising to the broad, uh, to the masses, but you're going after those people who like kids, who like to blow things up, who like to play video games. That's what it seems like. So, you know, you're not trying to get everybody in this room. Like, you want everybody who's sitting right here to really be involved, tell all their friends to move forward. So I just think, personally, not really knowing much about Kickstarter, that's what I like about it. I just think that's a great strategy. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So let me ask you guys this. I got two final questions before I get you guys out of here. One, what is coming up next for you guys? I know you guys are really still grinding with the, with the exploding kittens. What's, what can you expect next from you? I want to keep talking about that, but we don't want to say it because we've had so many people 
stealing your stuff. We can talk about some of the stuff. Can I talk about the one game that we probably will never make because it's funny? The one that the nautical sea game. So I want to make a card game where it's a nautical card game under the ocean, and all the cards are ocean themed. It's about love, and you have all these cards in your hand. You're trying to give to other people, and the game's called Let's Give Each Other Crabs. And it's all, all crab cards. Uh, I would play that game. I would, I would totally probably yeah. play that game. Yeah, yeah. not with my parents. Two to five, yeah, no, two to five people. Yeah. yeah, so like that's the next. Maybe probably I'll never make it, but I want to make more card games like that. We're doing, um, we're doing a, uh, an iPhone version of the game. We've got an expansion deck coming out. And, and we are working on a, a second game right now that's really exciting. That it's not, not, that's not crap related. Yeah, not crap related. What, what happened was um, when Exploding Kids came out, we were completely unprepared for the level of enthusiasm that people had. And so people went out and trademarked the name before we could, and copyrighted it before we could, and like, put an app up on the App Store before we could. All this like, crappy, trendy stuff. Right. And, and the cleanup work that we've had to do as a result has been such a massive waste of our time. So we're trying to be protective about the next few games. So right. Give me the opportunity. Well, more good so stuff, right? The second question I got for you before we let you guys go is, you have to show everybody your socks. Yeah, do it. And let them know. Pull them up. He's up here in the Northwest. Those are my favorite socks. I got Sasquatches on them. Sasquatch yeah. socks. I have socks for everything. I have pizza socks, star socks. <laughs> I have dinosaur socks. But today was Sasquatches because I like Sasquatches. And because you're in the Pacific Northwest. And that's where Sasquatch lives. <laughs> that's true. That is completely <laughs> true. Yeah. Right on. Well, you guys want to tell everybody where we can find you guys at? Yeah, at explodingkittens.com. Easiest place to find us. Uh, and yeah, or just Google Oatmeal on Twitter, Oatmeal, or anything. Oh, pretty easy. Right on, guys. Thank you for spending some time with us here in the barbershop. Yeah, appreciate thanks it. Thanks so much. Yes. Appreciate the filming. Give it up.